of this experiment was to create a replica of up through the Iceman's shoe to see whether the design is sufficient in keeping feet warm in colder climates. The discovery of a 5,500 year old Tyrolean in the Alps between Austria and Italy in 1999 was an archaeological triumph. This provided a glimpse into how organic materials were used in the past and how they can be preserved in alpine conditions. Otzi had a complex kit, from grass, cloaks to hunting tools, but his shoes portrayed a fascinating design. Referred to as the moccasin-like shoe, which is known to be the second oldest ever to be found, was unique for its time. It consisted both of a sole and an upper guard made of bear and deer hide. A layer of dried grass was lined inside of his shoe to provide thermal insulation. I predict that these properties of the shoe provided a sufficient amount of insulation to protect the foot from icy conditions. I'm undertaking this experiment because archaeologically the preservation of organic materials is a rare occurrence and I thought this would be a fascinating artifact to replicate and use. When, orga when organic material is preserved it provides an interesting insight into avenues of the past which are usually archaeologically invisible due to poor preservation. In this experiment, only cow hide was used. I also substituted the plaited dried grass for twine, as there was time restrictions. Leather cord was used to bind the sole and the upper guard together, and also to create the basis for the twine meshing. Dried grass was also used for the final stage of insulation. To begin with, I cut out a sole which was 1.5cm larger than my actual foot. I did this to leave room for the holes which would be pierced through later. I then did the same for the upper guard of the shoe. In boiling water, I soaked both of these pieces to make them more malleable. A river stone was used as a shaping tool to stretch the upper guard so it would fit nicely over my foot and also so the shape would come down and bind well with the bottom sole. I then marked out evenly spaced holes and used a heated skewer to puncture holes throughout the sole. The leather cord was then weaved from halfway down the sole and around the heel and back to the adjacent side. guard was then attached on top and the cord was then threaded through both pieces of material tightly. Once that was completed, I cut the twine into individual lengths. For the area around the heel, the vertical lines were 20 centimeters long. The lines from the top half were around 50 centimeters in length, so they could reach the back of the heel. Once this was done, I cut a main line of about 60 centimeters to be knotted horizontally in a row-like manner. Twisting the vertical threads, 
Then noting the horizontal line just above that created a mesh-like material. doing six rows of this weave, this is the final product. I found that upon wearing the shoe it actually supported the back of my heel quite well with the weave of this, uh, the tight weave of the twine. I then created my suck like lining of dried hay which will serve as insulation for my foot. I line the inside of my shoe as well as the area around my heel within the twine mesh. Next I chose a shoe to use on my other foot to compare the temperature differences. I wore both shoes for about 10 minutes and then recorded the temperatures just beneath the arch of my foot. Using two bags of ice, I then created my artificial icy ground, which was just placed in the bathtub. As the weather was quite warm at the time, I decided to only test the shoes in the ice for five minutes, as the ice was melting at a rapid rate and it could affect the gauging of temperature. At this point I could already feel Otzi's shoe losing heat, whereas the modern shoe retained heat quite well. But nonetheless, Otzi's shoe was still quite good. I also found that ice is very slippery. After taking my second round of temperatures, I found that Otzi's shoe design lost a lot of heat compared to the modern boot, which only lost about 4 degrees in heat after 5 minutes, and Otzi's lost mm, about 8 degrees. Nonetheless, Otzi's shoe still kept my foot relatively warm. The parts around my heel where the majority of the dry hay was seemed to be the warmest. This experiment was undertaken to gain a relevant idea of how the design of a shoe can affect insulation. The implication of this experiment was that with the use of organic material, appropriate footwear for colder climates was possible. Even though my replica of Otzi's design didn't retain as much heat as the modern shoe, it still kept my foot warm and dry. With the use of animal byproducts, Otzi was able to create a technology to aid in his survival of cold environments. Organic materials such as Otzi's clothing and footwear greatly contribute to the archaeological record and our idea of what was used in the Neolithic period in harsh climates such as the Alps between Austria and Italy.